In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an ELT from Postgres using Change Data Capture. Let's go. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Sean and I am a developer advocate here at Airbyte. Now, in this video, we'll be going over how to build an ETL from Postgres using CDC. The benefits of using change data capture to replicate data from Postgres into any destination is that it mainly allows you to track all the changes applied to your database in real time, which is amazing, including things like delete operations. The ability to track and replicate delete operations is especially beneficial in ELT pipelines. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use Postgres change data capture in minutes using Airbyte, of course, but also leveraging a powerful tool like Debezium to build near real time ELT. Now, before we begin, there are some prerequisites that you need to have before we continue. Number one, you need to have Docker and Docker and Compose installed. And secondly, you need to have Airbyte deployed. Now, if you don't know how to do that, I'll put a link in the description below and how to do that yourself. Let's begin. Okay, so step number one, let's start a Postgres Docker container. And so I'm gonna open up my terminal right here. I'm gonna make this as large as possible so y'all can read this from your end. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paste this command that you will run in your terminal as well. I'll put this in the description uh, within the blog post that you'll see in the link down below. I'm gonna paste this command in here. And just so you can see, the name will be Airbyte Postgres, right? And our password will be password. And that's what I'll be using for this example. But when you do this on your own, please do not use the word password. I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> Hit enter. All right, cool. So in this case, we are naming the container Airbyte Postgres, and you can select a different press if you want. Next, now it's time to configure our Postgres database, configure Postgres schema, user, and necessary privileges. And in this case, we'll be using psql, which will allow us to execute queries from the terminal interactively. And to start psql, you just need to SSH into the Docker container we just started in the previous step. And the way we do that, we're gonna do docker exec it Airbyte Postgres forward slash bin forward slash bash. All right. And now once we're in this container, let's start psql and simply type psql. There you go. Now we are in. Perfect. Next, what we need to do next is create a schema and set the search path to tell Postgres which schema we're looking at. And the way we do that, I'm um, going to type create schema. Make sure I'm typing this right. Oop. Postgres. All right. And then we will set search path to Postgres. Now, although the database can be accessed with the root user, it is advisable to use a less privileged read only user to read data, right? And so let's create a user called Airbyte and assign the password to, in my case, password. <laughs> create user Airbyte password. Make sure I'm doing this correctly. And what will my password be? Do not tell anyone what my password is, please will be password and let's go ahead and continue. And then next we'll grant the user access to the relevant schema. And we'll do that by typing the commands grant usage on schema to where Airbyte. Perfect, that's been granted. Now to replicate data from multiple Postgres schemas, you can rerun the command above, but you'll need to set up numerous Airbyte sources connecting to the same database on different schemas. So let's move on. Next, let's grant the user read only access to the relevant tables and the way we will do this is just type in the command grant now please know that these commands will be in the blog post in the link in the description below so you don't have to type what i'm typing just copy paste everything so grant select on all tables in schema postgres to airbytes boom and then now we what we want to do next is allow air an airbyte user to see the tables created in the future as well right so you know what um let's type this in alter default privileges in schema postgres grant select on tables make sure i have this on to airbyte Boom. So the user we just created also needs to be granted replication and log permissions, right? And the way you do that is type in alter user airbyte replication login. We got that going. Now it's time to create a new table and populate it with some data. And so what we'll do is that we'll create a cars table with an ID and the cars name. So let's type this in right now. And I'm not going to type this in. I'm just going to copy and paste this. In this example, I mean, I have a Honda. I don't have a Mazda, but let's use Mazda too. <laughs> so let's copy and paste this in. We're creating a table down below. And you'll see we have um, a Mazda and a Honda in here. Hit enter. Boom. 
Next, what we want to do after this is create a logical replication slot using the PG output plugin. Now in Postgres, a replication slot is used to hold the state of a replication stream in case you were wondering. And the way we do that, we'll type select PG create logical replication slot, air byte slot, PG output. There you go. Done. Finally, what we need to do next is create a publication to allow subscription to the events of the car table, right? Now we do advise users to add only the tables that they want to sync in the publication and not all tables that can get kind of expensive. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's do this now. So create publication, pub one for table cars. Boom. There you go. Now what we need to do next, this is good to go. We created um, our table. This is good to go. What we want to do next is configure a Postgres source in our Airbyte UI. Now I have our Airbyte UI open right here already. Assuming that you have Airbyte running already, simply go to localhost 8000 and you will be able to go to the Airbyte UI. Now to set up a new Postgres Airbyte source, all we have to do from this point is you can click new connection up here, but I'm just going to start from down here on the sources button, click new source, right? And our source is Postgres. So we'll select Postgres. Very simple. Our host name will be localhost. DB name will be Postgres. Schema will be Postgres. User will be Airbyte and password. My password is not password, okay? Now, what's next after this? We will leave this empty. This will remain disabled. Our replication method though will not be standard. Our replication method will be logical replication, which is capture data capture CDC. Now, there are inputs we need to fill out here. Our plugin, it's already filled out, will say PG output. Now, our replication slot, we're gonna type in airbyte underscore slot publication pub one. And as for SSH tunnel method, we will go ahead and keep that as it is. Now, next, we're gonna hit, click set up source and it's gonna test that our source is good to go. Let's cross our fingers. This should work. It will work without a doubt. Now, let's wait for that to load and I'll see you all in a second. Boom, all connections, tests have passed. Now, what we need to do next is add a destination, right? So on this button right here, we're gonna click add destination, add a new destination, and let's do this now. So what we are doing now is that we are configuring a local JSON destination in Airbyte. Now, to do that, we simply just have to type in on, on the destination type JSON, and it will be local JSON. Now, the name for this will be, I mean, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it JSON CDC tutorial. And our destination path will simply be forward slash CDC underscore tutorial. Now let's click set up destination and we'll wait for this to go through and it'll tell us if this pass if it did it. All connections test passed. Perfect. Now it's setting up a connection and now we are on the connection. This is our connection tab. All right. So now under name, you can name it whatever you want. In this case, I will be naming this. It is already down here, but JSON CDC tutorial replication frequency. This will be set to manual. On the streams, we will keep this as mirror source structure prefix. Then it's time to configure the streams, which in this case are the table in our database, right? Which is the cars table that we have down here. If you want, you can actually open this table. You'll see the, all the columns that we have in here. Now, what we need to do next is select our sync mode. If you want to take full advantage of using change to capture, you should use incremental append only to look at the rows that have changed in the source and sync them to the destination. Now, if you were to select the full refresh mode, what would happen is that you would sync the whole source table, which is most likely not what you want when using CDC. Now I'll put another link in the description below if you want to check out a documentation on that. So now we're not checking full refresh append, we're doing incremental append. All right, so this looks like it's good to go and let's test the connection. Let's set up connection and see what happens next. Let's click on this button um, on this tab. Okay, now we're here and let's test the sync. So what's going on right now is that I've pretty much select sync and we're just waiting for it to be completed. Now, if you want, you can actually open this tab, which will show you the the logs and pretty much what's going on as we're waiting for this to sync. Once this is good to go, you will know it's ready because instead of rather than running, it will say succeeded. Okay, there you go. We saw that this has succeeded. It is completed. I did not mean to rhyme, but we have successfully used change data capture. Now we don't want to just blindly trust this. We want to verify that the sync actually worked and let's do that right now. Okay, so now I am in the root directory of the Airbyte project. Now what we do want to find is a file named Airbyte raw cars json and the way we do that is um, pretty much from this root file right from this root directory of this project simply just type what i'm going to type, type right now there you go 
we're in here and look at that we have the airbyte raw cars json file and pretty much all we're going to do is type in cat airbyte raw cars there you go okay boom so now we see all the data that has been captured and changed and etc now we would really want to test this again and make sure that this really works so let's test the cdc in action by creating and deleting an object from the database so let's go back to where we originally were let's do insert into cars values i want a tesla i don't have one hopefully in the future let's just insert a tesla and then what we want to do next we want to delete from cars where name equals tesla okay so if this really works we will capture this change right now to be able to do that let's go back to our ui and let's click sync again simply just go back here click sync and once it finishes we'll go ahead and check the local JSON file to verify that the cdc has captured the change and make sure it works all right so it has succeeded now let's check this json file one more time okay so now we're looking at this json file which should now have two new lines showing the addition and deletion of the row from the database and we can see the tesla's right here so we have confirmed that cdc allows you to see that a row was deleted which would be impossible to detect when using the regular incremental sync mode now to wrap this up in this tutorial you have learned how logical decoding works in postgres and how to leverage it to implement an elt using airbyte using cdc to capture databases change is one of the best ways to replicate data especially when you have huge amounts of it and need to track delete operations in the source database now if you want to try out airbyte you want to check out our fully managed solution you can check out airbyte cloud in the link in the description below but we also invite you to join a conversation join our community on slack and if you have any questions I or anyone else on that channel will be more than happy to get back to you and help you out as soon as we can. Thank you all for watching. My name is Chris Sean, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.